Hello and welcome to your in-depth weekly horoscope for week commencing the 3rd of October. This is for the Sun or the Ascendant. I'm going to give you the broad themes to look out for, but please stay with me. I will go through each of the 12 zodiac signs to give you in much greater detail the key influences for each. Now this week sees Pluto end its retrograde, which began on the 29th of April. Pluto is also going to be linking with Mercury, the planet of communication, now traveling forwards and gaining traction in the sign of Virgo. And that's very much about clarity and precision. And the combination of these two can, if we choose to embrace their joint power, can help us to probe, to research, and to get really clear about some important strands in our situations. The problem is that Mars in the bright and bubbly Gemini is in a right angle with Neptune. And Neptune in the 12th solar house for us all in a square with Mars in the third suggests that some of our desires can come from the subconscious, but also we may read or hear things. People may uh, even indulge in gossip with this particular aspect, and that can then inform some of our other actions and Mars of course is very much about desire. So that combination between Mercury and Pluto gives us a chance to try to make sense of some of the confusing energies that could be washing around. I mean one of the things that could happen with Mars square in Neptune which goes on for the whole of October and the whole of November within three degrees is that we can lose power. Our physical vitality is lower and our thinking around our clarity can be blunted because of course like Virgo, Gemini is ruled where Mars is by Mercury, the planet of communication. So there is a real uh, contra flow energy going on between these two sets of influences. Also, of course, Saturn and Uranus, which were so prominent in 2021 and at the start of 2022, are within one minute of being exactly square all through this week. So that in itself is something we need to really be conscious of. Uranus in the sign of Taurus, which is very much about land. It can be about food. It can be even about fashion, but obviously very much about daily money and our budgets. That's being challenged by Saturn in the sign of the collective, the sign of Aquarius. So we're all feeling the pinch. There are a lot of headwinds around the cost of living. Some of them, of course, are coming about because of mismanagement by governments. It's not all to do with what we're doing as consumers. There are decisions that have been made which aren't necessarily for uh, most of our benefit. And of course, the war in Ukraine is also having an impact too. But that particular aspect, the one thing about it is that we've had a lot of practice to deal with it. But it will play out in each of the zodiac signs in its own way. And I will share about each of those uh, in much greater detail. Now, towards the end of this week, the sun starts to go into a really fantastic grand air trine between Saturn, which it's very close to being in trine with, and a bit broader with Mars. And that gives us an opportunity to use the expressive and air energies of each of those planets where they're located in Gemini, in the Sun in Libra, and of course uh, Saturn in Aquarius, to use the air energy of each of those in a really productive way. And on Sunday there is the full moon in the sign of Aries, and it is going to be in opposition with the Sun, which is pretty much in close contact with Venus, which governs the sign of Libra. Now, if you'd like to know much more about this particular full moon, please see below and you can check out my deep dive special video. But essentially, I think that Venus softens some of the potential tension that this full moon can create each year. But I think the Aries full moon 
is asking us to think about what we want as individuals. And the moon in Aries can be very immediate. It's not very considered. It's quite an urgent energy. Whereas the Sun and Venus close together in Libra are asking us to think about how we interact with others, how we balance things, how we disseminate information, uh, how we embrace fairness, because those are very Libran energies. But I think the worst of this particular full moon is mitigated somewhat by Venus, but the wider influences at play on this particular event are quite challenging. And of course, uh, one of those is Mars squaring with Neptune. So please join me for that deep dive. But if you would like to ascend above this Zodiac broadcast and understand what year 2023 will hold for you personally, if you give me three pieces of personal birth data, of time, date and place of birth, I can give you your forecast for 23, but you'll get the rest of year 2022 free. Plus you'll get your roadmap, your character analysis, which can guide you for the rest of your life and help you to seize opportunities, but also understand more of some of the patterns that may have developed in your life, which are not so easy. And there's 30% off with my special package. Please see the link below. Finally, if you are new to my channel, I'd be honored if you would subscribe. Please click or tap on the bell notification symbol. And if you're an ongoing viewer, thank you so much for joining me. So Pisces, your week commencing the 3rd of October forecast sees your ruling planet Neptune in that square with Mars. And this is going to dominate the whole of October and the whole of November. If you're not quite sure about where you're living, this could be a time of soul searching. There can also be a lot of thinking about your emotional or familial needs as well. The thing with Mars is it's quite a triggering type of energy, particularly in the fourth house where it can be quite defensive. I know Mars in Gemini can be quick-witted, versatile, outspoken, articulate, but also gives us a push to be a bit more physically active. For you, those energies can be working their way into your thinking around your home or family situation. So if there is a conversation to be had or you are thinking about uh, changing where you reside, it's important to understand that Neptune can erode the thrust and drive of Mars and also create quite a lot of confusion. Now, concurrent to this, of course, Saturn and Uranus are coming back into a much closer right angle. It's just within one minute of being exact. If you are in a situation where you feel a bit isolated from others, or you feel that it's difficult to relate to the prevailing uh, trends or, uh, or even ideologies that seem to dominate uh, the media or even social media, that in itself could see you wanting to cocoon yourself into some kind of existence which is protective, entirely understanding. The great news is that whilst there may have been some cross wires around your relationships, whilst uh, Mercury was making its way through your seventh, eighth houses back into the seventh in Virgo, now Mercury's going forwards and linking productively to Pluto, there can be that person who seems to have a great gift of peering into your situation and giving you a great sense of clarity. And that could be a really, really essential help at this time. But of course, the full moon is emphasizing your everyday finance and the position of the sun and Venus are in your eighth house, much more to do with longer term finances, but also where we're most invested psychologically. Now the eighth house obviously can be about sex and Venus too. So is there somebody you're drawn to at the moment who has a very evocative and sultry energy? The next two weeks can be very exciting if so, but I think it's that link between Mercury and Pluto and the fact that Pluto goes forwards at the end of the week, that's what you should really embrace because that's going to bring some clarity to what is otherwise a little bit of a confusing skyscape and one that could leave you feeling a little bit isolated from others or even just the themes and strands that life seems to throw up at the present time.